everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today we have a break the blank page. What comes next? I'm starting with one of the pages that I broke in this video. 10 new ways to break a blank page. You can check that out. Today's page, we started by applying paint with a key card or a palette knife. Three colors, bright aqua, yellow, and Prussian blue. You can scrape that on a page. Now, I use the sentiment simplify on this page and basically that's what I'm doing this while I love the colors in the background I needed to simplify it I needed to knock back some of all this pattern that was going on so I'm taking some white gesso nothing fancy and just putting that on pushing back some of the busyness of this page it's all very one note it's all very much the same and i want to get some contrast some texture some pattern something else on here and while it wasn't my idea i decided that i'm going to put us this garden gate stencil on top of the white gesso before it dried and i am removing it through the stencil this is giving some texture and pattern and ah I love it. It's pushed back what's behind it, giving you something else to look at. And I'm starting to see some possibilities with this page beyond the fact that I liked the colors. Then I grabbed some Prussian blue and that same stencil and I'm stenciling dark blue with the Garden Gate stencil. I'm using a makeup sponge to apply the paint and I'm patting off on my glass mat beside where you can't see. This again, the dark blue is what you're seeing up front. It's pushing back some of the busyness in the background, but I've really added to the busyness here a little bit more. I can still see the colors from the scraping of the paint with the palette knife or the key card. And I like the effect with the white from the white gesso pushing it back. So there are elements here that I like, but I still really don't know where I'm going to go with this page. And that's okay because you don't have to have it all figured out. I'm just going to keep adding things. Here I'm adding more white gesso, removing the paint through the stencil. That's just pushing back some of that busyness and it's simplifying things. Then I look through my focal images, I go through my napkins, and I find this sunflower napkin. And I like how the yellow picks up the little bits of yellow that are still peeking through on the background. So I'm thinking I'm going to put this, use this as a focal point on this page. So I peel back the two excess layers of napkin. And I grab my liner brush and I'm going to, with a little bit of water on the, t on the brush, that's what you see me dipping into here. I've got it on my table. I'm just going to isolate the one pattern. And then I'm going to be able to play with it in and on my page and decide on the composition. And I kind of like that. But I'm thinking, you know, the, what all that busyness is in the background, it's going to peek through the napkin. So I decide that I'm going to glue the napkin down onto just some plain white copy paper with my fluid matte medium. And that's going to give it some weight. It's also going to block out, when I glue this down onto the page, you won't see the blues and all that pattern come through from what's in the background. And I'm putting a layer of white or fluid medium on here. 
I'm thinking to cut that out, I'm going to put it on and it's going to block it off. And then I take a detour. I decide that I want to set up the middle part of this. I'm going to paint it Prussian blue. I'm going to give it a wash of Prussian blue. And a wash, by a wash, I mean I've taken the acrylic paint and I've watered it down somewhat. And I'm just going to paint that in. Now you can still see a very subtle amount of the pattern peeking through from what's in the background. But instantly when I've painted this middle section, this dark blue, it focuses your eye on it. So no more do we have all of it the same. We now have some variation. And I'm thinking this might be a good backdrop to set off the napkin. So on my way, after I dry this, I grab that napkin and I start cutting it out. And then I think, oh, you know, I have this sunflower meadow stencil. And I'm going to stencil with the Gamboge stencil butter from the Crafters Workshop onto that dark blue band. And that yellow is going to pick up and, and work with the yellow that's in the background. The sunflowers. I was going with the sunflower motif. That's what I picked in my napkin. Now, don't worry about that napkin. That's ready. I'm going to file that away in my napkin storage. And it will be there ready to go for another project. So I get the stencil butter on my palette knife. Now, stencil butters are similar to modeling paste, but thinner. They're kind of cross between gesso and modeling paste, but they have this amazing shimmer and these bright, bright colors. And they're just really easy to work with. So I've stenciled three of these sunflowers and I want to flip the stencil. Now if you get some where you don't want it, you can scrape it off. Now the stenciled butters take a little bit longer, I find, to dry than the TCW modeling paste and other modeling paste that I've used. So I am going to let this dry. And I do use a heat tool, but I hold it far away from the stencil butter so that I don't bubble the stencil butter. It's just not a look that I want on this piece. Loving how the little yellow in the background is really working well. So now that that's dry, I'm positioning my stencil how I want it, which, which elements I want. And I'm putting a little bit more stencil butter through the stencil. Another thing, just like modeling paste or gesso through the stencil, take the time to clean your stencils, wipe off the excess, and wash it with your Murphy's Oil Soap mixture or in the sink. Loving the shimmer that this makes. And here I'm scraping off the excess, and then I wipe it with old rags and paper towel. I'm not so worried about paint being stay, staying on the stencil because it doesn't damage your stencil, doesn't close it up. So again, once that's all dry, I want to bring out the blue section and instead of using black to shade I'm using white with my angle brush and the floating acrylic technique of shading or highlighting. I guess it's a white so it 
And I just thought the black was going to be too stark here. So I want kind of a fade out from the black and around, or from the blue in the middle and around the edges. And I just go over that to build it up slowly over time. If you're starting to practice this floating acrylic way of shading, doing the edges is pretty stress-free because you don't have to be so perfect and you can get used to how much water, how much paint to have on the brush. So the background, while it started with the palette knife scrapings, it really has come a long way. I love the mutedness with the whitewash on it. The removing paint through the stencil, the re-stenciling to give more pattern there. But it's a very unique texture that you get from using that palette knife to put paint on. Now, some of this, my stencil butter seeped under the stencil. And I'm just taking some of the Prussian blue paint and painting over top of it. This is me being really picky, but it's also just to show you that if it really bothers you, you can do something about it. And you can paint over top of the stencil butters or the modeling paste if it, if it doesn't quite work out exactly how you wanted it to. I'm doing a little bit more of a whitewash on the background here because I'm going to stamp my sentiment, simplify, on there. And I want it to show up. And when I did a sample on the background, it kind of got lost with the busyness of the background. So here I'm simplifying the background a little bit. And I am going to use a baby wipe and wipe off some of that. But the background is the background. So I'm using my wooden blocks and I'm pressing it into black acrylic paint. That's off camera. I take my palette knife and I spread it on the glass and I just press into it like it was a stamp pad and then press it. I don't try to make this perfectly straight because, well, that's not going to happen. And the more you practice using stamping with your blocks like this, the better you get, the better you are at guessing where the block needs to be. And I am on the left-hand side, I've got a baby wipe and I'm wiping off the stamp because I don't want to leave the acrylic paint on it because it will gum up the stamp over time. So I put simplify and I tried a little bit to follow the curve of the uh, band, the blue band that I put on this, putting the letters back in order because now I'm going to stamp on the bottom the exact same sentiment, simplify. And that's off camera. And I think I cut out from that so you won't see it, but that's what I'm doing. And I apologize for leaving this section in. I'm, I meant to cut it out and get on with the next part, but missed it in the editing process. So because I use black and there's no black anywhere else, I decided I'm going to grab my Posca pen. I'm going to put this dash outlining my blue band. And that just adds a little detail. I could have put X's. I could have put dots. Could have done a straight line. All in all, I'm really quite happy with how this page turned out. I really wasn't sure how I was going to 
move forward from how I had broken that page. But simplify. Take something out. White it out. Add something else to until the page tells you what to do. I really, really like the background. So remember, when you have excess paint, leftover paint, one of the things you can do is break another page. Scrape it onto a blank sheet that you have there. Work with colors that work together. And then you can start where we started on this page. So here is the finished page, the stencil butters, shimmer and shine, the yellow of the, the sunflowers work so well against the dark blue. So here I'm going to use my art journal process cards, prompt and process cards to talk about recap. I applied paint with a key card or palette knife and that just scraped across and I used bright aqua, Prussian blue and yellow. Then I put gesso over top of it to simplify it and I removed paint or the gesso through the stencil and that gave some wonderful patterning. Then I stenciled with that same stencil with the darker color. And between those combinations, it worked. I added a wavy line to ground my focal image or to break up and simplify the background give you that contrast. I put modeling paste, well this time it was stencil butter, through the stencil to make my focal image. And this one, well this is going in my stash. I highlight it with white around the edge and around the blue border. And I stamped with acrylic paint for my sentiment. and the page was edged with some Posca pen. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up, share my page with your creative friends. Enjoy the close-ups.